Hello there everyone, Anthwolf here with even more Final Fantasy XIV. Playing as Evain Jubaro here, my red mage, into the Stormblood patch story content. We are going into patch content 4.4, also known as Prelude in Violet. And where we last left off, it seems the prisoner exchange between Dorma and the Gallian Empire, of course, didn't go according to plan. And it seems it was all behind, all due to the Crown Prince's design and his devoted follower, Asai. Of course, it seems there may be another version of Xenos disguised as a Resistance member who was in Castrum Albania, who borrowed a set of Magitek armor. And of course, Alphano, in his rather naive and reckless fashion decided to go to the Empire and has met some mercenaries in an area known as the Burn. All in all, things are uh, continuing apace right now. We are here in Revenant's Toll. I'm gonna pop back into the Rising Stones. I think we need to speak to maybe Yestola or Alice. So, let us begin. Sisterly Act. Alice is impatiently fuss fussing with her Link Pearl. Sure, I'd rather keep myself informed of the situation. Vancred has some important intelligence for us. Even though we've been summoned before the Eorzean Alliance. See if we can speak to Vancred first, see what he's learned.
Oh, I'm going the wrong way. That would also, also help. bother telling you to catch your breath whatever brought you galloping back to us I assume it's urgent quiet without further ado then after the successful uprisings in Doma and Alamigo rebels in several other provinces were inspired to follow suit unfortunately they did not fare quite so well the Dalmascans paid the heaviest price for their defiance, the Emperor made a show of raising their capital to the ground, prompting many of their neighbors to abandon thoughts of resistance. But not all have given up on liberty. Heartened by the news of Doma's prisoner exchange, some still believe that the Empire may one day be amenable to negotiation. We have the shinobi to thank for spreading the good word. They have worked tirelessly to keep the subjugated informed, and a little knowledge can go a long way. There is at least a spark of hope then. A spark in want of kindling, yes. The Alliance has already begun supplying materiel to resistance movements abroad many of whom would otherwise struggle to continue the fight. The support effort has been led by the Sultana and the Elder Seedseer, who have both seen enough Alamegan refugees to know the consequences of oppression. And for their troubles, they have quickly earned a reputation as folk heroes in certain corners of the Empire. That is all for the provinces. As for the Garlean motherland itself, our friends, the Popularis, have suffered something of a setback, I regret to say. Talk is rife that Doma has summoned a primal, and the Empire's more liberal voices are being drowned out in the fearful clamor for retribution. And who did they think orchestrated this summoning? <laughs> oh, any but those truly responsible. Xenos has seen to that. Speaking of whom, the Crown Prince is recovering remarkably well. Well enough, in fact, to enable him to personally tour the provinces, putting the fear of the Emperor into the hearts of any would-be dissidents. He walks in plain sight, and none suspect him. Then it's as we feared. Yes, and Assian wears his skin. But it was not that which brought me here in such haste. During my time in the provinces, I learned many things. Yet at no point did I hear any report of a Doman emissary in the capital. But Alvano should have arrived by now. Could they be holding in there in secret? The possibility did cross my mind, but I have reason to believe he never reached his destination. As you know, Scions assigned to covert operations, such as Riol and myself, are issued special link pearls for communication in the event of an emergency. I mention this because it was originally Alphino's task to coordinate the response at headquarters, meaning he has one. And whose voice should I hear when mine recently crackled to life? You spoke with Alphino? Spoke with, no. I but heard his voice, and none too clearly at that. Two words were all I could make out. The burn. The wasteland on the edge of Othard. Something must have happened to them there.
There's no time to waste. We must make for the burn at once. I had a feeling you might say that. And? I can't very well sit around here drinking tea if Alphano's in trouble. You said yourself that this link pill was only to be used in emergencies. So I'm going, and that's the end of it. Oh, far be it from me to change your minds. We're going to have to mention to the Alliance, maybe, that uh, we're not going to maybe turn up to the Council meeting. Okay, Bancred's going to deal with the council for us. Okay, onwards to the Dolmen Enclave.
Kuro. How's things going here? Feel the burn. Hien is mulling over the details of Alphano's Link Pearl Call. Setting up some uh, falcons that take your Stola and Alice. Is considering becoming a warrior of the steppe herself. The burn is now accessible. Hmm. Let's have a look at this then, shall we? It is a dungeon, an unsync dungeon at that. We'll get some Toms of Mendacity and Genesis. Of course, I am currently capped out with Genesis, but that's fine. On route to Garlemald, Alphano made a final link pedal called a Fancred before falling silent. During the one-sided and distorted communication, he is said to have spoken the words, The Burn. The name of the vast wasteland on the western edge of Ophard. Once a verdant region teeming with flora and fauna, repeated summoning saw it bled of Aether and reduced it to a barren desert. But even in an unforgiving environment such as this, life has endured. In a, in a fierce struggle for what little Aether yet remains, the burn's beastly denizens have grown uncommonly savage. And you and your comrades must contend with their dangerous ilk as you scour its white sands for Alphano's trail. So, we recommend we be item level 340 for this dungeon. And while we're looking for party members... I will have a quick look at the um, various uh, mechanics of the bosses we may encounter.
seems fairly straightforward as a dungeon. Well, the bosses anyway. Seems fairly straightforward, actually. Some mechanics we've seen in bosses before. Hmm, good timing as well. Into the burn we go. Generous sandstorm to welcome our arrival. So we have a warrior, an astrologian, and a samurai.
Okay, up to the first boss. The scorpion's dead. We have head attack. But these crystals do have a purpose similar to the griffin in the Dusk Vigil. shabby. Not too shabby at all. Item level 355 gear. Holy crap. This gear's almost as good as the Mendacity gear we're getting from Tombstones, which is 360. What the... What the hell? Elegant technology? Well, I know the Imperials have used elegant technology, but... This is like an elegant facility.
here is the second boss, the Defective Drone. So good. Wow, what the hell? The Blacklands. I wonder if everyone else is having the same uh, issues we're having. Myself, I need to sort of my armor company seals again. I keep saying it, keep forgetting to do it. Looks like there might be something in the ground there. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. With the ant lions in uh, Alamigo. to the final boss. The Mist Dragon. Oh, bollocks. Help!
Wow. I knew there was something there, I didn't really have time to look at. That's a giant sandworm. <gasps> and there's an Imperial ship in the distance. Between contending with bloodthirsty beasts and sand in my every conceivable place, I had begun to despair of finding you again. Do you recognize the crashed ship over yonder? Mistress Alizé and I briefly inspected it. It is the vessel that bore Master Alphino away. But there was no sign of him nor of Maxima and his people. More Machina. It would seem they were involved in a struggle. There may be clues. We should split up and search the area. These were no ordinary soldiers. Over here! The insignia on this man's uniform identifies him as one of the Emperor's personal guard. Hand-picked soldiers, answering only to the royal family. That would explain why all the casualties are Garlean. They were fighting their own. You're saying the Emperor was behind all this? That Alphano is his prisoner? Mm, we don't know that just yet. We must not jump to conclusions. Besides, Alphino is more than capable of looking after himself, is he not? I suggest we return to Doma to consider our options. Whatever happened here, Master Alphino is long gone, and any subsequent search may safely be left in the hands of the Shinobi. Where in the world are you, brother? If you die on me, I will never let you hear the end of it. I was wondering if we were going to find the Asian mask in the ash.
Shadows in the Empire. Hien has a request for the Scions. has another <clears throat> another emissary one he and would appreciate the scions be there to greet brings you here oh alliance business we have a request for doma well he and but that can wait they told me you were out searching for alphano did you manage to pick up his trail If he wasn't at the crash site, he might still have escaped. We have to keep searching. And we will. Alphano embarked on this journey as an emissary of Dorma, and I hold myself responsible for his safe return. I will have our shinobi in the provinces search for him as a matter of urgency. Chin up, Alize. You'll get to admonish your brother for his recklessness yet. Well, someone has to do it. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to be fine. There is one thing I'm not sure about, though. You said it was the Emperor's personal guard that attacked Alphano's airship. But the Popularis would never have been able to arrange the prisoner exchange without Varus's blessing. So why would he sabotage his own mission? They may not have been acting on Varus's orders. The guard answer not only to him, but to his family, the Crown Prince included. When Yotsuyu summoned Tsukuyomi, Asahi was quick to proclaim that a Dorman citizen had violated the terms of our agreement, that the negotiations had failed. And it is this version of events that is now being repeated across Garlemald. To hear the tale, one would think the prisoner exchange never took place. Plainly, someone is manipulating matters from the shadows. Most likely Xenos, or whoever it is that wears his face. Whichever Asian you mean, we all know the nature of our adversary. The servants of Chaos are true to their name. Their meddling has cost Dorma a chance at peace. Whoever it was that loosed his personal guard, the Emperor cannot be ignorant of these developments. We must proceed on the assumption that our treaty is indeed in tatters. But come, Lise. You have journeyed far. Let me hear your petition. Right. 
So the big news is that Alamigo has agreed to join the Eorzean Alliance. To make it official and discuss where we all go from here, the leaders of the Five Nations are planning to hold a meeting, and we were hoping you might come too. We've already seen what we can achieve when we work together, and the Alliance hopes to work even more closely in future. They think it's our best hope of keeping the Garleans in check, and I agree. As do I. By coordinating our efforts in the East and West, we may be able to discourage them from committing their forces to a single front. I accept your invitation. I must, however, ask for time to attend to some pressing matters here. In light of recent events, the risk of Imperial reprisals is greater than ever, and I would not leave Dorma unguarded. Ere I depart, I must shore up her defenses. Understood. I'll let the Alliance know. We'll wait to hear from you before setting a date. The meeting's to be held at the Royal Palace in Alamigo, incidentally. Do you remember the way? Well enough. Please assure my hosts that I will not keep them waiting any longer than I have to. Consider it done. And thank you for agreeing to come. If we all put our heads together, we're sure to find the best way forward. For everyone. Okay, so we might be getting asked to assist in Doma's preparations to show up its, its defences, but at least wishes to have a word first. We'll keep an eye on Alice, of course.
If we are to ready ourselves for invasion, we shall need manpower, provisions, and time, all of which are in notably short supply. Candid as ever, Yugiri, and correct, I concede. Fortunately, I have an idea. Tis plain no single nation can stand against the might of the Empire. And it was only with the aid of others that Dorma succeeded in winning her freedom. So, I mean to take a leaf out of our Eorzean friend's book and form an alliance of our own. In addition to those with whom we already share an understanding, I would reach out to Hingashi and Tsuinosato, and further afield to the myriad peoples of Nangsha and Dalmaska. I am under no illusion. Not all will answer the call. Yet disparate though we may be, we are united in our desire for freedom. If our neighbors could be made to see what is at stake, Asian machinations and all, cooperation need not be so far-fetched a notion. It may even seem practical. Under the guidance of our former leader, Master Louis Soir, we once strove to unite the fractious city-states of Eorzea. I dare say that experience shall be of use in your endeavor. We should be glad of your wisdom. For the record, I would have been in favor of this plan even if it hadn't been my grandfather's, but I have to ask, how will we secure the time to carry it out? Not that anyone has forgotten, but the Garleans have airships. Lots and lots of airships. Should they catch wind of our plan, they could send an armada to overwhelm us before our alliance had even begun to take shape. Not if we deny them access to the skies. During our time in the burn, the Warrior of Light and I chanced upon some Allegan ruins. Oh? As such ruins go, they were not particularly unusual. But something about the surrounding land struck me as odd. Faint though it was, its ethereal residue was uncannily similar to that of Azizla. Identical, in fact. For locations so far removed to share a single etheric signature is all but impossible. I conclude, therefore, that the Allegans created the floating continent with land taken from the burn. While that is a most intriguing theory, I fail to see what relevance it has to Dorma's defense. Aziz La was enclosed in a powerful energy barrier, impenetrable even to an agrius class battleship. It occurred to me that those ruins may have enjoyed similar protection. I have no proof, but the Warrior of Light did report seeing a structure resembling other known Allegan field generators. All right, but even if we could put up such an energy barrier, it surely wouldn't extend beyond the limits of the burn. So what's to stop the Garleans flying around it? Fuel. The Dalmascan capital, Rabanasta, was a key imperial refueling point in the east. By laying waste to it as a lesson to the rest, the Empire greatly hindered its own operations in the region. If an imperial fleet were to advance upon Dorma, it would now have little choice but to travel as the crow flies over the burn. I see. A word of caution. Even assuming the generator still functions, raising a barrier of such a scale will require a prodigious amount of energy. And few places are so bereft of suitable crystals as the burn. A source of energy. Tell me, 
Did the Allegans make a habit of launching things into the sky? A curious question. Besides Azizla, I know of only one other notable instance. The Red Moon Dalamud, whose fall triggered the Calamity. Just the two occasions, you say? Then I believe I may have a solution to our energy problem. You do? I may. To find out for sure, we would need to visit the Azim Steppe. Which would, I now see, present the perfect opportunity to discuss an alliance with the Zayla tribes. <laughs> How very neat. What say you then? Shall we see whether this road leads? Are we discussing the Dawn Throne, perhaps, and that other structure that looked like it was floating but was now in the ground? A power in slumber. Hien is eager to set out for the Azim Steppe. Why don't we get to Taru to do that? hoping that she wouldn't um, go off on her own, but she seems determined. Okay. Ian wants us to meet at Reunion. <sighs> we haven't been to the Azim Step in some time. tire of this vista the endless fields the boundless skies tis a sight to make a man forget his cares but not his purpose i trust might this be a fitting moment to tell us what we are doing here of course during my time with the mole I learned some few myths of this land. One goes thus. In the distant past, when all seemed doomed, a wayfaring soul came unto the steppe. Venturing into the northern crag, he received of Nama a sliver of her essence, a shard of the shining moon, and with it clove the tainted land from the earth. 
The end thus averted, to these fields did the wayfaring soul return, and venturing once more into the northern crag, he buried the shard, and made unto the heavens an offering of blood. A tainted land cloven from the earth, and an offering of blood to the heavens, as is La and Dalamud. That was my thinking, yes. And you believe that yonder mountains hide an artifact possessed of sufficient power to raise Azizla up to the heavens. I suppose that might suffice. Worth a closer look, would you say? I would. Head to the Mole Tribe. So Siren is warning us that we may find the power source we seek to raise whatever elegant structure may be in the burn. But if we take the power structure, we may um, offend the Zayla tribes. The will of the moon. Yastola is ready to put her skills to use. A 
amidst the radiance of your being, I sense a shadow. Well, that's not ominous at all, is it? deep does it go? Such an abundance of ether. Are we in luck? We are. This is an elegant artifact, most likely built to regulate the flow of ether. I strongly suspect the ancients used it to stem the flow from here to the burn. That would explain how they were able to untether what became Aziz La from its surroundings. But were we to throw open the floodgates, the resultant deluge would surely be sufficient to raise our wall. And in restoring the flow, we may also restore life to the wasteland. Hmm. What is it? While the device itself harbors a surfeit of ether, the opposite is true of the surrounding area. An effect of regulation, perhaps. A similar phenomenon seemed to be occurring in Doma. Whatever the explanation, the answer will not reveal itself here. We have seen what we needed to see. Let us return to Mol Illo. So, the walls of that cave seem to be containing the ether or dampening it just to hold it in one place? As you stole said, maybe an effort of regulating how much ether it releases in some way. But it seems that it is what we seek. We need to go speak to a crazy woman, Sadu, of course. Seems she is one of the, or her tribe is the most fervent believers in the Dusk Mother.
it's nice that the Empire managed to, well, it's not nice for the Delamascans, of course, but it's nice that they destroyed their only refuel depot in the east here, making this whole thing feasible. Got, I wonder what Gosetsu's up to. I was wondering if we would find him here. No doubt we'll encounter him at some point in the future. Even if it's just like a passing moment or so. Well, of course. So Sado is willing to give us access to the power we need and for the default tribe to join us, but only if we defeat her in single combat. Would you commence battle for the will of the moon? Yes, this spot shall serve as well as any. I shall enjoy this Han. Is this truly necessary? Have you no peaceable way of making decisions? Speak not of peace! You stand before proud warriors of the Dothal. In the heat of battle do our souls burn brightest! We lay low the strong that we may rise higher! That is our way! The way of might! There is no other! Oh, they did not want for conviction. <laughs> I 
Indeed. It's what makes them such dangerous enemies. And such useful allies. Enough talk! It is time to fight! Spirit blazes right within.
Ooh, five seconds. Yes, yes! Not since the Nardom has my soul burned so! Come, we have only just begun. Enough! You were not granted leave to set the step ablaze. Well, well, the sun has come out to play. Be gone, Moonstruck Oranir! I am busy! Fool of a Dothal! Have you forgotten the face of your master already? The sun will never set! From his seat on high, he reigns over all, now and forever. Yet what should he find here but a battle to determine the fate of the step? A battle waged without his blessing. This will not stand. You, Doman! You who come to petition the warriors of this land, forget that all Nama's children are wards of the Oranir. As first among my brothers, your petition is mine alone to judge. Ugh, these words are as wind from a horse's backside. Plentiful, but your act sings more sweetly. Let her speak for you. Insolent child, you will learn your place. Forgive me, brother Magni, but we have an arrangement with the Dothal. We will not abide any interruptions. So be it. The sun will pass judgment on all. Didacul, join me. Oh well. What a freeway fight. Alone. Beg not for mercy, for you will have none. Bear witness to the power and the glory of Azim! Constantly at each other's throats like rabid dogs. Gods, I'm turning into her. <clears throat> I am not the patience for this, but if we must fight, let us at least be brief. Come. We are fighting as your stola. Okay. Okay, those skills are absolutely fine by me.
Oh, crazy, got you with that. Concentrate. Before me, Mark Wellen, learn. Before me, oh, these are a bit tougher. Tremble before the sun. Never have I felt such bliss in defeat. T'was a battle to burn soul and flesh to ash. We Dothal will lend you our strength as promised. Nama's power is yours to wield. What does the sun say to that? The sun is not driven by base motives such as yours. But I, they have been judged and found worthy. It is the way of the Oranir to accord recognition and respect to the strong. You have made sufficient proof of your strength. The sun shall answer your call. 
You have our thanks. We are glad to call you allies. You? By what are you called? <laughs> you stole her. Why? He still seeks his moon. Are you... Are you my Nama? I beg your pardon? <laughs> In battle, you shone with all the majesty of the full moon's light. Your healing touch, the embodiment of the Dusk Mother's love. Long had I wondered if my Nama might not be a woman of the steppe. Beholding you, I am all but certain. Now, look into my eyes. Could it be? Could you be? I am. Not interested, little son. Try again when you've become a man. Little? Sun, crave you salve to soothe the ache, fire to sear the wound in your heart. Uh, we'll leave them too much, shall we? We've wasted enough time here. Siren awaits for word of our success. <laughs> Sorry, that last sound there was the sound of, like, battle commencing. <laughs> ah, God. Give me a moment, I'm going to take a small break just for a couple of minutes, and then when we come back, we will uh, continue. So, I'll mute myself, be just a moment.
Ah, sorry about the wait there. Okay, let's continue on. The call. Yashtola would see the Aether flow once more. So we need to increase the Aether flow from the ruins in the cavern. Sorry, in the cavern anyway. And then we need to go to the Allegan ruins back at the burn to see if they'll accept the power. Did it work? It did. Ether may flow freely to the burn once more. Which not only may get us our energy shield that we need, but also restore the wasteland. That's right, Yagiri was looking into Sui no Sato to see if they would be interested in an alliance. And I think Alice was going to Hingashi to speak to the people there to see if they'd be amenable to the alliance as well. Actually, before we head back to the Dome and Enclave, there is an Aetherite we can attune ourselves to. over here in the west.
you not. Okay, now to the Dormant Enclave. So Hingasi and Sui no Sato rejected the plans of a Far Eastern Alliance. But I guess the resistance in Nangsha and Dalmaska have agreed. Maybe the Confederacy as well, though they weren't mentioned. I wondered if we were going to go activate this field generator in the burn but at the moment it just seems that Tataru and Garland Ironworks the engineering team are going to go check it out to see if it functions like we think it will regardless seems it is time for the alliance meeting <laughs> That's right, it's usually Alphina who deals as the official face of the Scions.
Upon proceeding to the Royal Palace, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. Mistress Lise, Commander Aldin, it gives me great pleasure to formally welcome the city-state of Alamigo to the Eorzean Alliance. The pleasure is ours, Your Grace. I know I speak for all Alamigans when I say that we are glad of this chance to stand with our comrades of the Alliance. And we, for our part, are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. Lord Hien of Dorma, at your service. Pray, accept my heartfelt thanks for your generous invitation. Nay, tis we who must thank you for journeying so far. And would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the part the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have played in bringing all of us together. In times of great unrest, you and yours have been our constant companions, without whom we would not be here. With apologies to Lord Hien and Mistress Alizé, it occurs to me that we have not gathered in this way since that fateful day in Uldar. The day I lost my arm and my freedom. As I lay in my cell, Never did I dream that I would one day be given the chance to represent my homeland at this council. I would not even be alive had you not plucked me from the jaws of death. You, Yugiri, and Alfino. Would that the lad could be with us. I too owe my presence here to Alfino. In so many ways. Until such time as he returns, I mean to carry on his good work as best I can. Come, friends. Let us leave the past in the past and turn our eyes to the future. My Lord Hian, pray tell us how things stand in the East. Having heard the rumors of dissent in Garlemald, I dared to dream of a peaceable solution. Hmm. The Empire will not so easily change its ways. If the Garleans have a mind to take back Doma and Alamigo, we'll be hard-pressed to stop them, even with the might of Six Nations. But while we lack the strength to fight the tide, a course may yet present itself. If we read the winds aright. The winds suggest but one course to me. One which leads from the sea unto the river and thence to the source of all our woes. The Asians. Indeed. All here have felt their blighted touch. It was the bringers of chaos who nurtured the Archbishop's tyrannical ambitions. They who bestowed upon him the secrets of summoning, as they have so many others before and since. And while they remain, we shall know no peace. Our objective is clear. The question is how to achieve it. That our enemy parades about in Xenos' skin poses problems in itself, but... Ere we get to them, how are we to infiltrate the Empire and get close enough to strike? While I see the wisdom in targeting the Assians, an assassination attempt on Garlean soil would do little to aid our cause, even were it to succeed. It's time we used our enemy's preferred tactic. Subterfuge. 
You have an idea? Speak your mind, Master Thancred. None here know the enemy better than the Scions, and you may have best of all. Whatever it is you propose, we will give it fair hearing. On that you have my word. Very well, Admiral. My proposal is thus. We dispatch the Shinobi to Imperial territory. There, they sow the rumor that the Crown Prince perished in the battle for Alamigo, and that the man parading around is in fact a corpse inhabited by a servant of darkness. does have the ring of truth about it. And were the Gallians to learn that their future ruler is a puppet, the Empire would be shaken to the core. But at the risk of sounding stupid, would they actually believe such an unlikely story? I didn't. Ordinarily not. But prior to his miraculous recovery, rumors of Xenos' death had already begun to circulate around the Empire. Ultimately, however, what the masses believe is not our chief concern. Our true objective is to create an opening for rival factions within Garlemald to exploit. Just as a war of succession erupted in the wake of Empress Solus's death. A war which raged until but recently, plunging the Imperial House into disarray as nephew and uncle grappled for the throne. It is no coincidence that one of Varus's first acts as Emperor was to name Xenos heir apparent, family feuds being so tiresome when armies are involved. Not all welcomed his choice of successor, however. There is no shortage of individuals who aspire to the throne, who would jump at any chance to seize power. The news that Xenos is not only dead, but a puppet to diabolical forces, would be too enticing to ignore. The Empire would not be quick to recover from a second war of succession. I am no stranger to infiltrating Imperial territory. With a team of operatives gathered from among the Alliance's finest, the plan should have a reasonable chance of success. Dorma already has Shinobi in place throughout the provinces. We stand ready to act, and act we must. What say you all? I'm for Master Thankry's proposal. We shine a light upon the Asian and test the Empire's unity. Twas his plot that scuttled Doma's negotiations, was it not? Why then, if we can eliminate him, there may yet be a chance for peace. Let us wage this war of subterfuge that we may one day lay down our arms. Gods know we never will while the Asians remain. History must be changed. I recognize that voice. Ahead looms a calamity. Ahead looms light, expunging all form and life. Is that Earlheart? Twin dooms only you can forestall. Only you. Oh, uh, Elbert. What's the matter? There's... there's a voice! Spies in our midst? Nay, I sense no such presence. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. 
through wide the gates that we may pass. Is it over? Master Thancred! Twelve for Fend. Bear him to a private chamber. Have every healer make ready. Swiftly! Master Thancred remains in slumber. Though his vital signs appear stable, he's unresponsive. What could have done this? And, and why just him and not the others? I'm afraid we could not identify the cause, milady. Our examinations revealed no wounds, nor the presence of any poisonous substances. Gods, that only makes it worse. You're to let us know the moment there's any change, all right? Thank you for coming. Knowing Thancred, he would apologize for being otherwise engaged at so crucial a juncture. In gifting us a course of action, Thancred sowed the seed of all that is to follow. We have but to nurture it as best we can. To him, I would say, rest easy, that he may wake to enjoy the fruits of our labors. Now, the matter of the mysterious voice must not be forgotten. Will you tell me exactly what happened? Alizé and I heard a voice in the moments before Thancred collapsed. It was accompanied by a severe headache, as if something were clutching at our minds. Did you experience the same thing? So... In between the voice and the pain, you felt as if you were somewhere else entirely. Your testimony confirms my suspicion. That which you experienced was, I believe, your soul being plucked from your flesh. Called. Oh. I myself examined Thancred. Reach out as I may. I could not sense in him the spark of life that is his soul. That Thancred alone was stricken so is likely due to his heightened sensitivity to the effects of ether, a consequence of his prior possession by the Asian Vahabrea. The owner of the voice, whoever it may be, reached out to you, called your souls, and in so doing, caused you and yours such pain. But... If that's true, where exactly are we being called to? I know not. Yet one thing is plain. Whoever waits for you on the other side is possessed of a power unlike any I have ever known. Forgive us, Lys, but may we leave Thancred in your care for a time? As if you had to ask. I may not be a scion anymore, but I'm no less a friend. Don't worry. I'll see to it that Thancred's well looked after. Just focus on solving this mystery, all right? Thank you, Lys. As the Elder Seedseer says, tis no ordinary individual we are dealing with. Nor can we discount the possibility of Asian involvement. Whoever or whatever is behind this, the sooner we find out, the better.
Yuri on J may have also been affected. Yeah, he heard the voice too. He might have been able to identify it more. If it's who I think it may be. <laughs> we gain the NGO facial expression. I think it was the original Warrior of Light, or as we know him really, as the Warrior of Darkness, warning us that the path we were taking was leading to Light's overall victory. Which, well, he would know what would happen there. But that's my guess. Prelude in Violet. Alice is eager to rendezvous with Yuri on J. Okay, back to the Rising Stones. Uriangier! God, it's good to see you. Would that our meeting were under happier circumstances. I judged the voice sufficient cause for concern even before you sent word of its effect on our comrade. You heard it too, then? Aye. And all but certainly at the selfsame instant. Alas, pained as I was, I could make little sense of what few words did then reach mine ears. Who do you think is responsible? Could this be the Asians doing? That I cannot say. Not when so little is known. Ere I indulge in speculation, I would examine Thancred with mine own eyes. To Alamigo, then, without further delay. One other thing. During my visit to the Far East, I observed a strange phenomenon. Thou referrest, I presume, to the localized reduction in etheric density. Well, that spares me the trouble of an explanation. Yes, I noted precisely that at two apparently unconnected locations. I take it the phenomenon is not limited to the Far East. Indeed not. Of late, our agents charged with surveilling the beast tribes have spoken of little else. In every corner of the realm, they tell of places in which the ether hath grown thin. Naturally, my suspicions first turn to primal activity, but the areas thus affected betray no evidence of summoning. I must confess to being quite perplexed. If the same phenomenon is being observed in multiple locations on opposite sides of the world, we may safely discount regional factors. Needless to say, this warrants further investigation. Indeed. I shall make it my task to... The voice... It calleth to me once more.
I, I hear it too. Yishtola, Arianje, open your eyes. Open your eyes, I beg you. Say something, anything. Not again. Please, not again. Could Lisa been affected? She wasn't there at the time, no. Maybe. Oh dear. That definitely sounds like Albert's voice. And it would make sense. I wondered if the voice was intruding, stopping Yuri and Yishtola from investigating why the ether is so thin in regions. Alice is due to meet someone here. Exactly. Oh, the kobold. The kobold whose parents were killed in the summoning of Titan. Here he is, my lady. Go 
taboo. It's been too long. I'm afraid there's been no change. If he can see or hear us, he has given no sign. I see. You're still fighting. I'm proud of you. We promised that we would come and visit you together, didn't we? Alphano and I. I'm sorry that we haven't managed that yet. You know, with the three of us like this, does it not remind you of that night? Of the stars beyond count twinkling in the heavens? I was feeling pretty low back then. Powerless. But I knew that my brother was close by if I needed him, and that the others would be waiting for me back at the Rising Stones. Not like now. I've seen my share of trouble since coming to Eorzea. Been reminded again and again of my limitations, of how little I can change about this world. And I've come to know the sorrow of parting all too well. But to have the people I hold dear struck down before my eyes and be powerless to help them, that that I cannot bear. That's not something that you can or you need a burden alone. No, I don't. You're right. It's pure arrogance to imagine I can solve everything by myself. You'd think I'd have learned that by now. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, that's more than enough brooding for one day. Come on. We have friends to save. What can we possibly do, though? I mean, we're more... Alice and I, more action-orientated. Honestly. The, Eos the Eosian Alliance have their plan. To sow discord in the Empire. Which was Fancrit's plan until things went horribly wrong. And Yashtola and Yuri on J we're gonna look into this de-aspected ether. And now they're um de-sold as it was.
Meanwhile, back at the Imperial Palace. The Populares no longer present an obstacle. Now is the time to bring the Empire's might to bear. A word from your radiance is all it takes. But one word, and the Imperial Army will fall upon Alamigo as a pack of bloodthirsty wolves and tear that feeble nation apart. Despite the lengths I go to, an emissary playing the part of a fool. When first I took this face, I swore to use all of my knowledge, all of my power, to further the cause of the Empire. My deeds stand testament to my commitment. It was a little bit. And with this adamant flesh at my disposal, I could destroy the Icon Slayer as easily as one might swat a fly. Why do you hesitate? <sighs> Our enemy is resourceful. Though victory is certain now, it will not remain so indefinitely. Deliberate if you must, but be quick about it. We will speak again when you have unburdened yourself of doubt. Until then, I take my leave. Father. He knows I his... should be the one to sigh. What? I played my part to perfection. I had earned my rest, and then, thanks to La Habrea's crowning act of idiocy, our favorite emissary sees fit to summon me back. Elidibus was ever a warrior, a most tiresome trait, would you not agree? What? Have you no words for me either? No matter. I've long grown weary of this mummery. Now, my dearest grandson, let me remind you of your place in the simplest of terms. You do not make judgments, you administer them. Swiftly and to the letter. Naught else is your concern. Elidibus may be an insufferable bore, but he is no fool. His choices as emissary seldom err. If aught threatens the balance twixt light and dark, it falls to you to remove it. Be it by your own hands or by your armies, 
You have ample means at your disposal. That is why this empire exists, why I built it! Oh dear, have I touched a nerve? You always were an easy one to read. I pity you, I do. As they say, ignorance is bliss. And I know how much happier you would be not knowing the things you know. The Founding Father was an Assian, and he created the Empire solely for the purpose of sowing the seeds of chaos. Don't take it personally. I merely do my duty. To bring about a calamity requires no small amount of power. And there is no surer way to obtain such power than by collecting powerful pawns. To that end, I have labored long and hard, and I must say I am quite pleased with my handiwork. Paltry, though it seems, in comparison to Alec. Mark me, Asian. Man is the master of his own destiny. Nice. Ah. <sighs> Such a waste of time and energy. Both yours and mine. Lest you forget you are Emperor now. If you wish to spout drivel about man's destiny, save it for the masses. It will serve to give them a sense of purpose and you pliant pieces for the game. Oh, do stop sulking, boy. You of all people should understand. Ours is a struggle to restore both mankind and the world to their rightful state. Viewed thus, our goals are one and the same. Meanwhile, at a resistance encampment somewhere in the Empire.
Oh, shame. I could have actually stuck around and enjoyed that music. Sounded like it was getting good. So, holy shit, that's a lot of um, things to consider there before we end this patch 4.4 story progress. So, the forefather of the Gaulian Empire, who united the Empire itself, and declared that they should destroy all icons to prevent their summoning, is an Asian. And it seems he has returned at this time. That makes sense in a way. In enforcing or declaring war on Eorzea, he's drove and the beast tribes to summon their icons, even though he doesn't he declared that he didn't want them to do so. But in summoning them it depletes the land of Ether. Elidibus taking the body, perhaps? Or maybe he's always been Xenos. There's something else to consider as well. I always wondered if it was our character and I was setting up something for Shadowbringers, the next expansion, that we've always been Elidibus, but it seems that is not the case. That it was Xenos' body that Elidibus was housed in. And of course, Alphano is touring Imperial lands with who we assume to be... Well, no, I won't say the name because that's still yet to be revealed. But with Shadow Hunter, this Asian killer. Hmm. And it seems the Emperor, Varus, Solus' grandson, who wrestled and won the War of Succession, really dislikes being a puppet of the Asians. It is now, of course, his son who wants to prompt and go to war, and his grandfather. I think Varus is in great trouble of being assassinated. If he dies, then an Astian becomes Emperor of the Gallian Empire. And they'll, if they get rid of him, then there's nothing stopping them from doing so, especially if they attribute it to an alliance effort. If they blame the alliance for the, assass the assassination of Varus, things will go very wrong very quickly. Hmm. Either way, that's just my thoughts. When we come back in the next stream, which will probably be in about half an hour to an hour or so, we'll be going into the patch story content 4.5 part 1, also known as a Requiem for Heroes. Patch 4.5 is split into two parts, of course part 1, part 2, and we'll probably do them separately depending on the time it takes us. But uh, yeah, we might actually get that done today here on Twitch, uh, depending on how I feel. But yeah, we'll be going back in, we'll be continuing the story progress in 4.5. And if you're here on Twitch, I'll see you hopefully before long. And if not, if you're watching this later on YouTube, I hope you've all enjoyed the series so far. And I'll see you for even more next time. Until then, though, bye bye now.